Think about all the AI coding demos you've ever seen and now think about which of those are actually gonna become products that people will use and pay for. When you view it that way, it's no surprise that there is a critical missing piece here that nobody's talking about. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to overcome that missing piece and take a giant step towards using AI tools like Gemini, Firebase, and Windsurf to build real software. Software that people can actually use and software that you can actually charge money for. While running my marketing agency, we served some of the world's largest software companies and it was exciting to work along alongside some really talented development teams. I was in awe of how these wizards could conjure up software spells that would generate millions of dollars. I never thought I'd have that power until AI arrived. I've distilled the best of what I've been experimenting with into a simple step-by-step -step process that anyone can follow. No computer science degree required. Here's why this matters. In today's AI gold rush, non-coders are really stuck building very basic software. And while these can be fun experiments, they're just digital sandcastles waiting to be washed away. If you've ever tried vibe coding, you know how frustrating it is when you and the AI start going in circles. I call this the circle of doom. This is where the AI doesn't know enough to move forward and neither do you. It's time to move beyond this frustration, beyond these experiments and build a rock solid foundation for your idea that can evolve and scale. And a lot of this revolves around having that engineer mindset. I'm not saying you need to learn how to code the old fashioned way, but understanding how software works under the hood is pretty necessary to create something valuable. Having just a basic understanding of databases, APIs, and how the front end interacts with the back end will really go a long way as you're building out your software tool. The cool thing about AI is that you can learn as you're building valuable stuff. The biggest issue I see with all of these AI coding demos is that they don't have a database. They simply vibe prompt something to really max out what's possible on the front end or what can be done like in the browser and then folks often get confused as far as why is it not working and why is the AI just kind of spinning out of control and not progressing. This is because it doesn't have a database. Any software that you use has a database connected to it and that's what we're going to dive deep into today. The database will end up being the foundation of your software that you can then build and evolve and finally get some traction with whatever idea you're looking to create. So I'm jumping into the cheat sheet here. I make a cheat sheet like this for every single video that I create. There are now over 130 of these all instantly accessible to anybody who joins my Patreon. There's a link in the description, so check that out if you're interested. The first prompt I'm going to grab here is going to help us use Gemini to brainstorm what our database should be all about, what the schema should be. I'm dropping this right into Gemini. There's a few things with this prompt that I want to point out because they're very valuable. The first half of this is really just giving it a role and a goal. So telling it that it's an experienced database architect and asking for help designing the database for a new software product. The second part of this is where the magic is, and it just says, please ask me questions one at a time until you have enough information to provide feedback. Please provide options along with your feedback whenever possible. So by asking questions one at a time, we're not getting overloaded with a bunch of questions, and we're asking it to give us feedback of you know what are our options at every step. So I'm just filling out these questions. I'm still working on this startup idea for storing and sharing your own blood work information as I've had some health issues recently that have shown me how frustrating it is to just access these this lab work that you get done and share it with you know multiple different individuals. Now it's asking me for more information about this data, but what I've found can be really helpful is if you have actual data, like I do, that can be really helpful for uh, creating these databases. And even if you don't have that data, you can ask the AI to create some synthetic data for you. Here's a prompt we can use for that. I happen to have my actual data, so I'm just gonna upload that right here. I'm dropping that in here, just saying here is an example of the data that I'll need to store in the database. So a lot of times it's a lot easier to show rather than tell. By the way, you're probably gonna wanna use the 2.5 Pro for this if you have access to it. It's asking me some pretty good questions here, but I love how it's given me option A or option B. Getting back to that first prompt we put in so we can just say option A. Oftentimes it'll lay out a bunch of options that I don't fully understand. So at this point, I'll just say something like, what do you recommend? Let's go with that. You can do a similar process for whatever tech stack you're planning on using and whatever APIs and other things you're planning on using behind the scenes with your software. The more you start 
start to understand that, the more control you're gonna have over what you build. We'll get into some of that here in a second. You can have a lot of back and forth with this and it can get rather complicated. At some point it might make sense to just nudge it a little bit and say, hey, just give me a schema, which is really just a roadmap of how the data should be stored using a prompt like this. Dropping that in there, just saying, hey, this is a simple thing, give me something to review that I can react to. And this is perfect, it is now giving us an initial database schema with two tables. You can think of those as two different sheets in a spreadsheet. And each of these tables is basically like a spreadsheet with columns, the type of data, and any sort of constraints on the data that lives in there. You can see the table two, the lab results here as well. So just with that alone, we have now built the basic uh, data structure of our uh, software product. <laughs> now that we have that, we can jump into Firebase Studio and start building this out. So if you're new to this, Firebase Studio and Firebase are two different things. Firebase Studio is where you build the software, that's called an IDE, and Firebase itself is just a way of storing information. It offers various databases and other tools. Here we are in Firebase Studio, just clicking try Firebase Studio, and you can prototype the app in here, but I like to just start fresh with a new empty workspace to ensure that nothing extra gets in there that might cause us problems down the road. And in fact, I even like to start with an empty workspace, not one that is already filled out with a bunch of stuff. It's gonna take a second to spin that up. All right, and here's what a beautiful, clean, empty new project looks like. You can see over here, these are your folders. And this is where you interact with Gemini to build out your software. This initial folder is really just related to the AI itself. Uh, so this is about as simple as you can get, which I really like. Next, I wanna switch from this default built-in Gemini model to the Gemini 2.5 Pro. And for that, we're gonna need an API key. This, what's really cool is it gives you a link right here where you can grab that API key and you have to click this create API key. You may need to set up a project inside of Google AI Studio if you haven't done that already. I happen to have one in here. We're gonna create a new API key. And once you have that, you should be able to access Gemini 2.5 Pro. You may need to set up some billing here as well. I can tell you it's fairly inexpensive to start experimenting with some of this. Next, we need to go to Firebase to set up this database. So that's just firebase.google.com. I'm gonna scroll down to the build section and we are going to go to the real-time database. This is the simplest database that they offer and it's a good place to get started. You can see I've already experimented with a couple of these already. We're gonna start a new one. Here we go, we're gonna create a database. We're gonna start in test mode, which is easier for uh, building. And now we have this link to our database. We're gonna copy that. And now I'm gonna grab this prompt and we're gonna drop this right into Firebase Studio. We're gonna replace that link with the link that we just built. We're gonna copy this entire schema that we just built out of Gemini. Remember, schema is just a fancy word for a description of the database. And we're gonna drop that in here and see what happens. And it says, I gotta pay, I gotta increase my rate limits. Google's billing stuff is so confusing, but when you click through here and follow these links, you should be able to upgrade your billing and just fund it a little bit. There we go, linking it to my billing account. And like I said, I've been hitting this thing a lot. I've only spent $1.29 so far. So hopefully you can beg, borrow, or steal a couple bucks from somebody to start funding your software empire. Okay, let's try this again. And here it goes, it's starting to run. Now I wanna explain the tech stack that I'm using. I'm sticking to a full stack Node React uh, tech stack. So this is a pretty standard JavaScript tech stack. If you have no idea what that means, don't worry about it. You may wanna, in your off time, start to learn what those tools are a little bit inside of your favorite large language model, such as Gemini I can teach you all about that tech stack. I picked that one because it's just so popular and it seems to be natively what the AI likes to create. And as you're going along building your product, what I've found is really cool to just flip back and forth. So have another instance of Gemini open where you can just ask it questions, you know, like right now it's, in, it's creating this package.json, you know, let it rip, let it do its thing. But that whole time while it's working, you might be able to ask it here, what is this package JSON? What does this mean? Why do I need this? Because that's gonna come up over and over again as you build these projects and you'd be shocked at how quickly you can start picking this stuff up, especially when you're not having to write each little um, snippet of code you, and you just learn what the AI is doing. It's gonna be 
very helpful once the, when the AI gets lost, you can get it back on course. We're gonna install Node, that's all that means. And I didn't know that that meant that long ago, but this is installing the software that we're gonna use as our backend to connect to that database. And this is just walking you through exactly what you need to do here. So we'll go to settings, project settings, service accounts, generate new private key, downloading that to the desktop. Oftentimes it'll ask you to do stuff that it can do itself. I find that uh, Windsurf is a little better at that and overall Windsurf is a little easier to use. So if you're struggling with some of this stuff, try Windsurf and make sure you're using the Gemini 2.5 Pro inside of there. There are a lot of things that just seem to work better inside of Windsurf without getting too much into it. It seems to have more contextual awareness of what's going on. Okay. So this told us, you know, to cr that we should create this file, create this folder. I just said, hey, why don't you do that? And there you go. All it, it did it for us, which would be really nice if it knew that it could do that. I'm just telling it to proceed. And again, I'm really not sure of, of what it's doing here. I'm learning more each time I go through this. And in this way, I like to call it vibe learning, where we're not just telling it, you know, what to do. You know, these fancy people that have been coding for a while can actually vibe code because they know what to tell it when it gets stuck. They know how to set these little things up first. Whereas brand new people who are not coders, they can't vibe code just by saying, you know, create me this amazing app that does X, Y, Z. It's just not gonna have enough information to do that successfully. And again, it's telling us to run these commands, but if you just nudge it, say, give me that command, it's gonna give you something that you can just click okay on, boom. And then of course the bug fixing, that is 90% of coding. So, you know, don't be surprised if you run into issues like this where it throws errors. You're just gonna have to start working through them. And if you find yourself going into that circle of doom, oftentimes it helps to just take a break, take a walk, ask another AI in another window, hey, here's what I'm experiencing. What can I do to work through this? Try Windsurf. Windsurf can oftentimes get through a lot of this stuff a lot faster than Firebase Studio. Right now, it seems to be the easiest to get things done for a non-coder like myself. Now I'd like to populate the database with the example data that we've created, and I'm asking it, you know, to create a folder. I just said, hey, what folder should I drop this into? And it gave me a little command for a data folder, which it created. I dropped my file right in there. It's figuring out how to load that test data into the database. It's now building the seed database from this information. Awesome, it looks like it's pulled all of that data in. All right, now that the database has been populated, we're gonna start moving into the middle of the stack here and work our way from the backend database to the front end, which is the um, you know actual app that you see on your uh, browser. We're gonna use this prompt. It just says, let's start building out the API endpoints so that we can read this data on the front end. And again, don't be intimidated if you don't know what any of this means. Just kind of go with it, flow with it, try it, you know, over and over, and you'll start to get it. Especially if you just keep asking questions and learn about these things and be curious about how these things fit together, because there's really not that many components once you start to understand what's going on to get this to work. All right, we've built those API endpoints. Next is to test it using curl, which I already did, but you can use this prompt for that. There's another fantastic tool called Postman that you may want to check out that is really helpful for exploring all different sorts of APIs because a lot of the software that we use is really just one API connected to another. So understanding how uh, to get information from those APIs can be really helpful. Postman helps with that. There's a lot of buzz about these different MCPs that are being developed. So, you know, a lot of those are really just connecting to different API endpoints. And even as I'm saying this, I'm realizing I had no idea what any of this meant just a week or two ago. So I'm in this together with you. I'm learning how to do this. I'm not learning to be a coder in the traditional way, but I'm trying to just learn enough to be dangerous, learn enough to actually build something valuable. So I've tested these AI API endpoints using this, and now it's time to build the React front end, which we can use to display the data and really be on our way to start manipulating that and adding features uh, and building out our software. So let's just drop this in. All right, we're getting started with that front end here. We've made a directory here called front end. Once we get it up and running, it'll give you some code to start up that front end. And we can see here all of my <laughs> beautiful lab results. And I know that this does not look impressive compared to a lot of the other demos out there, but we are well on our way to creating something that is very valuable because we've really created a real piece of software here 
with a back end, with a database, with a front end, and from here we can start saying, okay, now we want to just highlight the abnormal uh, blood work here. We want to start manipulating this in different ways. We want to start making this look pretty or add functionality. Lots of direction we can go from here now that we have this strong foundation. I can tell you I've built uh, already tools that are providing a lot of value to me, different ways of tracking my Patreon supporters and different ways of tracking, you know, email um, engagements that I'm getting with my audience. There's a ton more in the cheat sheet all about this going into depth with my particular uh, tech stack that I've been talking about here. There's a link to that cheat sheet in the description. Anybody who supports me on Patreon will get access immediately to that and over 130 other uh, cheat sheets in there. There's some coaching options in there as well. And I've got another video all about creating a one person startup that goes really well with this. So take a look at that video. I'll see you over there. Make your dreams come true.